when I first started meeting pedophiles and working with, uh, with people who were genuinely uh, uh, pedophilic, I, I think it took about two weeks to grow the skin. And I tell all my students this, is that it takes time, not nearly as much time as, uh, as one would think. We give a person different kinds of tasks, verbal tasks, nonverbal tasks, spelling, reading, memory, uh, ability to control their own, uh, their own thought patterns. We found several, you know, very important things. Uh, the largest main one uh, was IQ. It turned out that uh, people who are sexually interested in, uh, in children, 10 to 15 IQ points lower than average. Then we had physical height, again, part of routine you know, uh, medical, uh, medical checkups. People who were arrested for offenses against children were about 2.5 centimeters on average shorter than people who were arrested for sex offenses against adults. 2.5 centimeters in physiological terms is very, very large. It's about double the effect that we would get if a woman smoked when she was pregnant. The next big one, handedness. Roughly, you know, ten percent of the population, twelve percent of the main po mainstream population, is left-handed or non-right-handed, technically. But it was about thirty percent, thirty-five percent of the pedophiles. The only other groups that have non-right-handedness rates that high are schizophrenics, bipolars, and people with autism. Whatever it is that's wrong, there has to be a piece in the brain, and whatever piece of that had to have been developmental. We were looking at first, really in the surface of the brain. You know, the surface of the brain is composed of what we call a, a gray matter. It's where the major differences are. It wasn't until a few days after that we found something that none of us thought. There were huge differences in white matter. We all sat and were scratching our white matter. Nothing's ever in white matter. What? How could this? What could the? Yeah, it's cabling tissue that puts the di so the br different parts of the brain work together. How could this possibly lead to pedophilia? It just made no sense to us. And then it was just one of those times, you know, where a scientist gets lucky, which does not happen a lot. And my data, and I was pulling my hair, I could not make any sense of it, put it down. Another stack of papers on my desk that I had to read. And all of a sudden, one explained the other, and it just all of a sudden made sense. Men, when they uh, see somebody attractive, naturally widen their stance, their voice goes down a little bit. Women, when they see somebody attractive, start touching their hair, start accentuating their cup, all completely unconsciously. When we see a kid, our voices go up, we take on an avuncular turn, oh, are you lost, can I get you, where's your mother? Instead of evoking the responses that come with perceiving a kid, it's as if it's crosswired, and when it sees a kid, or perceives a kid, it's triggering the sex response system instead of the parental nurturing system. A literal cross-wiring. Nobody is in control of what, or no man is in control of whatever it is he's interested in or not interested in. I think just growing up gay made me naturally sympathetic to that story because, you know, I grew up being interested in different things from everybody else. There do exist. The psychopathic, you know, it's very easy to call them evil. There is nothing we can do to help keep society safe except for the, to keep these people out of society. They exist. Uh, but for the great majority of them, there's other pieces to the story. These are people for whom there's no reason to think that they did anything inappropriate, that they ever committed any kind of an offense, but they come in to a psychologist with, you know, Doc, I got a problem. They can't tell anyone, they can't tell their friends, they, they, they have no one to go to for support. There are many situations in which a mental health professional, psychologist, psychiatrist, whoever, is required to report this to protect society. But of course, the pedophiles are in society. They know that this is the regulation, and therefore they don't come in in the first place. We should be creating situations where they can come in, remain anonymous, and receive sex drive reducing medications or counseling or group therapy or whatever is appropriate to the situation we're in. Unfortunately, the thought, the automatic gut reaction that so many people have to this person is evil, the correct thing to do is remove them from society forever, is actually making things worse rather than better. 
but we need to be able to be dispassionate and clinical and think rationally about the situation rather than giving in to our first instinct, which is usually shoot first and ask questions later, which is unfortunately a great deal of public policy.